Welcome to Nomad PHP Lightning Talks. I'm Joe Ferguson. Nomad PHP Lightning Talks are 10 minute talks that give a high level overview or an in depth look at a small portion of a PHP related topic. Lightning Talks are a great way for new speakers to build their speaking resume and for long time speakers to test drive a new talk idea. If you would like to give a 10 minute Lightning Talk, please email me, joe at nomadphp.com. Right now we have Rebecca McGrain with us and she's going to be talking about keeping the code monkey fit. Please make sure you visit Joined In after the talk and, and leave her some feedback. Rebecca, take it away. So I'm Rebecca, as you indicated. I've been a health coach and trainer since 1994. Along the way, I've done some side jobs, some um, database administrative like training and some analysis and things of that nature. And I happen to have married a uh, really in-depth programmer that just completely blows my mind with the stuff that he does. So I had to come up with a way to blend my approach to health and wellness to help my husband because he wanted to be a healthier and a happier programmer and that's why I started building this code monkey health guide for for programmers and I call him my code monkey it's a term of endearment if it offends anybody I apologize up front the biggest challenge that I have found is that quite frankly programmers are not gym rats and there may be one or two among the herd but by and large, the brood is comprised of chair, rock, and hydraulic desk loving me. Don't touch whatever is in my coffee mug, heads down, coder. At least that's my husband. And you'll find programmers in a lot of different places, at least I have, but one of them is not typically the gym. And I don't really believe that it's because programmers don't want to be healthy. I think it's more that what most people do for health simply does not fit into the lifestyle of a programmer. Running here and there to the gym is not something that tends to happen. The good news is, is that science continues to prove that going to the gym does not offer programmers and other more sedentary professionals any significant health benefit. So you're not really missing anything by not buying into that course of action. Now, it's not a free pass or an excuse for living life, you know, pain riddled and fatigued with hypertensive states or being diabetic or just basically being a heart attack walking around waiting to happen. Instead, it's an invitation to integrate health elements into a daily routine that fit into an existing lifestyle. The way that I view the body is actually from a cellular level more looking at the telomeres, and our telomere has all of our base code. So I kind of view health as nothing more than a bunch of code that comes together, as if that's insignificant when it's really such a great thing, to give us this fantastic, fully developed, live-functioning project that is just absolutely amazing. So with the Code Monkey Health Guide, we wanted to make something that was tested, reliable. We took three years to develop it. Um, I've worked with other weight management specialists and pain management specialists and health coaches and trainers to come up with some things that really worked well. And then we tested it with programmers. And we said, okay, so let's take this and turn this into something that's open source and open and free for the community. So that's what we did. So there's a little backlog. So now let's go ahead and get ready and get started. And we're going to open up our IDE because just like we don't ever really feel the need to reinvent the wheel while we code, there's no need to reinvent it when it comes to our health. So we're going to use Composer to pull in a couple of best in class packages. And I promise you they are truly best in class because I wrote them. And I am Mrs. Code Monkey. Before I pull up the actual guide, though, I want to take a moment to look at two tools that will make the guide run smoother. As I go through the slide deck, I will present the goal, the best practices, and a beginner tip or two, followed by the logic or practical application for each of the different packages. So the first one is Wake and Flush. Now, this one runs once a day. It takes less than 20 seconds. You only really need to do this once a day, honestly. What you want to do is drink 16 to 24 ounces of fresh filtered water immediately upon awakening. Literally do it before your heat hit the, uh, hit the floor. If you forget, though, don't go, oh, my gosh, I didn't do it. Now I can't do it. Just drink some water when you can. The easiest way that I found for my code monkey to work this into their routine was to just put a container of water next to the bed at night. When they get up, they chug it down, and all is good. If by chance, drinking 16 to 24 ounces is too much to do first thing in the morning, then um, absolutely, definitely 
feel free to take as big of a drink as you can, maybe one to two ounces, and you'll gradually work your way up to 16 to 24 ounces. I do recommend, though, make sure that the container next to your bed has that full-scale volume potential so that as you develop the skill, you can take in more of the resource. Now, the idea here with the Wake and Flush is to push a really good amount of water through your body. Think of it as just flushing out whatever was left over from all of the cleanup of the night before. I'm not going to go fully into that concept. But basically, you want to push everything out. You want to refill your bladder and be able to eliminate again relatively quickly within, so you're eliminating like twice within your first hour of being awake. First fuel is another one of those concepts. It takes about five minutes in the morning, but it is a habit that you have to develop. And it's the first thing that you should do in your morning routine. Remember, morning is just whenever you roll out of bed and stumble to your computer, so it doesn't have to be actually be an AM hour for you. And the goal here is to eat 300 lean calories within 25 minutes of waking up. And a lean calorie um, is comprised of proteins, complex carbohydrates, dietary fiber, and healthy fats. The best practice for this is to have a 40-30-30 combination and use 100% plant-based sources for this fuel up. And if you use the standard, it will ensure you that you include the necessary dietary fiber without overdosing on fast and loose proteins or unhealthy fats, um, pancreas crashing carbohydrates, and all of those types of things lead to inflammation, pain, and brain fog, and we definitely don't want that. Um, I do want to mention, though, that I'm not advocating necessarily a vegan or vegetarian lifestyle. This is just a component piece. So in this application, you would want to go that way. If you're just getting started, you can obviously use vegan bars or vegan protein mixes. Um, ideally, though, as you develop your habit, you know, you would switch into things that you were making fresh in your blender or maybe your better half was making for you or picking up or things of that nature. And the idea here is that you, you want to fill your body up. You want to give it all of the resources that it needs to complete the job at hand. And you don't want it to be running around looking for things. And by doing that quickly, then what you have done is you have told your body that today, this is how I want you to function. This is what I want you to do. Here's the tools to do it. Go get it done. When you don't put those 300 calories and those combinations into your body within the first 20 to 25 minutes of waking up, you're telling your body, hey, I don't like you and I want to kill you, so shut down on me at some point today. It takes more than a day for it to shut down, but that's essentially what you're saying. Okay, so the scheduler is actually part of the guide, and I want you to think of your scheduler as a cron tab for your health routine. And this ensures that your Code Monkey guide to health, the elements and packages that are there, are executed in a timely and efficient manner. Once you set it up, it just runs. So a little bit of setup, and then it runs seamlessly in the background. The purpose of the scheduler is literally to integrate the lifestyle, exercise, attitude, and nutrition elements into your daily routine. And we'll know that they're integrated because you won't think about them anymore. They'll be just as natural as breathing. The target is to take 30 to 120 seconds, so a half a minute to two minutes, every half to full hour to complete a single health element. If you're just starting out with that scheduler, you know, you just use that calendar or a task reminder of your choice to set up a piece that works for you. If you need extra help, obviously getting a freelancer in to help with your coaching and your training would be beneficial. Just make sure that they're not your typical um, individuals who would say, oh, no, 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 you have to go to the gym or you have to do this or you have to do that because that does not work. It needs to fit into what you're already doing. Knowing and doing are two entirely different things. So that's why having an easy-to-follow program that gives you an alert or a reminder seems to work best, at least with the programmers that we have tested among. And we do know just people in general are significantly more likely to complete a task if they have an automatic alert or reminder to tell them to do that task. And the scheduler just makes your daily routine smooth and efficient. Another package inside of the guide is Workday. Now this Workday is going to run 8 to 10 hours. It could run as long as 14 hours. It just depends upon your Workday because it runs when you do. 
there are five basic steps to implementing the CodeMonkey Health Guide. Decide on the wellness element. You set your timer for 60 minutes, 25 minutes if you're an overachiever. When the timer goes off, you take 30 to 120 seconds and you complete that wellness element. You don't have to get up, you don't have to drive anywhere, you don't have to do anything other than just stay in your workspace. You can go out if you want, but you don't have to leave it. Once you do that element, you reset your timer and then when it goes off again, you just repeat the task again. Every second 60 minute session or fourth 20 fit, uh, 25 minute session for the overachievers, you take a 15 to 30 minute wellness break and at the beginning of that break, you take 30 to 120 seconds up front to complete another wellness element. So the goal is with the workday to just make those healthy elements just as natural as that schedule or running in the background and it just becomes part of your lifestyle. Best practices is to consume plant-based fat every three to four hours, complete a full body movement every three to four hours, stretch and engage your sitting muscles, so your hips and your, um, your low back and your uh, hamstrings and things of that nature. Stretch and engage your hands and your arms every three to four hours. Stretch and engage your neck every three to four hours. Stretch and engage your shoulders every three to four hours. And complete a partial or complete body movement routine um, about every hour if possible. And, of course, to elevate your heart rate every two to three hours and drink water every hour. And it sounds like a whole lot of stuff. However, I promise you that if you follow the standard, you reduce your pain, your stiffness, your fatigue, it helps improve energy, it lowers your stress and anxiety, it maintains your healthy blood pressure, maintains a healthy weight, it can actually help you lose weight if you're overweight, and regular exercise stimulates the memory function region of your brain and tells it to release a chemical, it's the brain-derived uh, neurotrophic factor, and that chemical re, uh, will rewire your memory circuits, making them work better, so that turns you into a better programmer. Um, so you want to be real clear here that we're not advocating, again, a complete vegan lifestyle, but in this instance, um, we do want to focus and start the workday habit or routine by consuming a plant-based fat every three to four hours. All right, so this is what workday actually includes. It includes a, a plant-based fat, full body movement, hip and knee movements, the fluid hue, a neck support, shoulder swagger, back guard, and heart rate optimizer. Now, as we look at each of these elements, I'll share the logic as well as practical application tips as we go through them. So plant-based fat, it's going to run every three to four hours, and this is because your brain is fat-driven, and it runs out of fat every three to four hours. The most efficient and effective fats are plant-based, and because your brain doesn't have that storage tank, you want to put fresh fat in to maintain optimal function. And this is why we encourage the plant-based fats here, is just because they're more efficient, they're more effective. Um, it's kind of the difference between pulling out of a payday loan center to go make a 401k investment or a stock market investment versus just taking cold hard cash. Plant-based fat is more like investing cold hard cash into an investment instead of taking out a high interest loan to do the same thing. So substituting the animal-based fats actually will inhibit the ability of your cells to send, receive, and or translate communications from your brain. And those communications are how your cells determine when and how to behave. So communication failure or obstruction leads to the degradation resulting in sickness, pain, and disease. So for nutritional purposes, I'm not talking about chowing down on a good steak because it tastes great, but for nutritional cognitive function, plant-based is the way to go, right? Hopefully, hopefully everybody knows, I mean, I'm not vegan. I will enjoy a steak. That's my, my lifestyle choice, but in this instance, okay, dead horse, there we go. You can easily provide a plant-based fat by keeping a jar of nuts and seeds on or near your desk. Throw it in your drawer or sitting on top. And when it's time for a new fat input, simply portion out a palmful for a snack. And a palmful is the perfect measurement for a snack. And if you take that palm and you turn it over, your fist is the perfect size for a meal. And we suggest including Brazil nuts, cashews, macadamia nuts, pecans, almonds, sunflower seeds, chia seeds, um, if you get into the freeze-dried vegetables, celery and peas are really great, and those all contribute to brain function and help increase your nutritional endurance. If you are in a group setting where you're programming, so if you're not a freelancer working from home, um, do go with the white chia seeds because the, they're very gelatinous, and the black ones will show up and stick to your teeth, and you just kind of look goofy walking around. So uh, choose white for your chia seeds. 
full body movement will run about every three to four hours, and that one you know takes less than 90 seconds with that piece there. And making a full body movement will give you just the right amount of time, that 90 seconds, to increase blood flow, help alleviate lower back pain, reduce your stress, improve your sleep, reduce other discomforts associated with extended periods of sitting. So if you have tingling in your lower limbs or in your low back or in your feet or if your extremities get cold, this full body movement will help with that. A 2012 meta-analysis of 18 different studies found individuals who spent a lot of time sitting were significantly more likely to have diabetes or heart disease compared to those who sat for less time. And significantly means twice as likely in this particular instance. So a good routine would begin, and I'm going to run through some exercises very quickly. All of them are available um, for download in, in the extended version of the slide deck. So you're going to begin by standing and working your muscle groups from your neck to your feet and then back to your neck if time per permits. You don't have to come back up if you don't want to. It takes no more than three minutes to do the routine. My personal routine, it takes me less than 90 seconds. It should be really fluid and almost like, like you're slow dancing with somebody in the mirror or something. So before you begin your routine, though, you may want to take a moment and shake loose. And you just do that by putting your feet about hip width apart. And you shift your weight from left to right, back and forth, um, starting with your feet. And then you work up your legs and your hips and your back and your arms. And eventually you look like a ridiculous person like made out of jello going back and forth. But it's really great, and it really interrupts all of the negative communication that's been coming into the different parts of your body at, at that point, and it loosens everything up. So you want to remember to work your hands and your fingers. Self-hugs are great for your shoulders and back, and side lunges are also an excellent way to, to do that full body movement for your lower body. There's a full routine, again, available in, for download. Your hip and knee is going to run every three to four hours, and unless you happen to be one of the very rare and extremely fortunate programmers who have that great blended solution of active sitting and a standing desk and a walking station and an Aeron chair by Herman Miller and the zero gravity massage chair, you more than likely have pain, fatigue, um, discomfort in your back, your legs, your knees, possibly your bottom. Um, and you could actually test it and see if you want it. You could poke. You could take your finger and poke kind of right around on your side where your hips and your buttocks meet up. And if you have tenderness there, um, then you really want to run the hip and the knee. So this three to four hour short break can alleviate the fatigue and soreness associated with the abuse that our body takes from being seated for such long periods of time. And an extended period of time is defined as anywhere from as little as 20 minutes to anything over an hour. And that scheduler best practices talks about taking a health element break every 30 to 60 minutes, and that's our target goal. Working in a good routine will start with you being seated, and you can cross your legs at your ankles with your left leg on bottom. And if you want, you can do this with, with us while we're on the talk. Gently push your left leg back with your other leg until a stretch is felt. You hold it for just a few seconds. One, two, three, relax. Recross your bent leg at the ankles, and then slowly straighten your legs up pushing with your lower leg, so both your legs will come up like in the picture, and you hold for a few seconds, and then you release that, and then you just reverse it and do it with your right leg. Then from there, you would stand up. You can use your desk to study yourself. I strongly recommend studying yourself. And then you're going to pull your right heel towards your buttock until a stretch is felt. You want to make sure that, the, that when you do this, that you keep your hips aligned with your ankle that's on the floor. You don't want to lean forward, otherwise you won't be getting the stretch. You hold that for a few seconds, one, two, three. You can go all the way up to 10 if you like, and then you repeat it with your other heel. You just put that foot down and grab the other one. If you have access to a wall, you can do a wall slide. So you just lean on the wall gently, and you slowly lower your buttocks until your thighs are parallel to the floor, and you hold it for 3 to 20 seconds. You tighten your thigh muscles and then stand back up. Don't try to stand up without tightening the thigh muscles. You could then transition to the back of your chair. Keep your feet flat on the floor, shoulder width apart, and squat as low as is comfortable for you. And just use the, the chair back or your, or your desk if you want to support you. And I know that this looks strikingly similar to the wall slide, but it uses your body in a different function or a different manner. You can modify this movement also with a deep knee squat when you're able to, when you have the stability. And you would just uh, take a couple of steps back from your chair 
keep your arms out as if they were on the chair and then you would lower yourself slowly as far down as you can into that knee squat to maintaining that that balance so um, and then hold it and then come back up your fluid hue or your hands elbows and wrist that needs to run about every three to four hours and again takes less than 60 seconds this one is something that's very um, close to home for me because many programmers suffer from cubital tunnel syndrome and it's CTF most of them will pass it off as muscle pain or just something weird that happens from time to time but CTF is a repetitive stress injury and it typically impacts your elbow your ring and your little fingers and it can cause pain it can cause weakness it can cause loss of muscle strength so you won't are not able to pick up things or you're not able to carry things the way that you used to be able to do and it can also cause numbness if you leave it untreated, it could end the career of a programmer because of the extreme pain or having to have surgery or even actually total loss of the affected hand. The way that this works is that the ulnar nerve is the primary driving factor between, behind uh, what causes CTS. The ulnar nerve, it begins up in the side of your neck and it runs through your shoulder and around your elbow and ends down in your hand. When you bend your elbow, it stretches the ulnar nerve. And when you rotate your palms down like you were typing on your keyboard, or when you raise and lower your fingers, that also stretches the ulnar. And, and again, every keystroke that you make, all of that stretching is actually what leads to inflammation, which turns into pain and tissue degradation. I want to be very clear here that if you think that you have CTS, please see a doctor specializing in CTS sooner than later. Um, you, I'm sure that you, we, we all have great careers and we want to continue with them. You can also try for symptomatic relief. You can wrap your arm in a towel at night with it straight, whichever um, arm is affected. You just put a, like a big beach towel or a bath towel around it and um, tighten it down with string, duct tape, whatever you want to use in order to keep it to stay there. Um, an old piece of hosiery if you have options to, to go there. And you can sleep with it. If it makes your arm feel better, then definitely go see the doctor and get, get some more support on that. A good routine in general for your hands, elbows, and wrists. We'll begin by turning your palms up and just letting them rest, letting your hands rest in your lap or at your sides as often as you can. So in those moments when you find yourself just staring at the screen and pondering how in the world did anybody ever write that, or any other time that you're not hammering out code, that open-handed uh, palm up kind of relaxing position can help take the pressure off of your hands, elbows, and wrist. So a complete hands, elbow, and wrist routine would be to actively bend your right uh, thumb up across your palm as far as possible. You hold it for 3 to 15 seconds to relax, and you bring your thumb back up as if you were saying, hey, good job, or you're trying to you know, hitch a ride someplace. And then you repeat it with your other hand. And then you would touch your thumb to your fingertips. Just one, one thumb and fingertip touch at a time, and then you go all the way back. Um, start like with your thumb and your index finger. Work all the way through to your pinky, from your pinky all the way back to your index, and then switch to your other hand. And you'll start off doing this slowly, and then see with um, experience you can pick up your pace and increase your, your uh, coordination there. Just be sure to touch each fingertip. And you do about three times, and you switch to the other hand. Then you would grasp your hand and slowly bend your wrist until the stretch is felt and you're going to kind of bring that down. And you just go as far as possible in the opposite direction when you bring it back up. And you want to make sure that you keep your elbow uh, bent if you can see that image on the right side of the screen. And then you would follow that. You can actually extend your left arm and keeping your elbow straight and grasping your left hand and you bend it kind of kind of bend your left wrist back until the stretch is felt and you can do it that way and you would just again anything you do to the left side you got to do the right side it's kind of like algebra there's extra exercises um, back in the guide let's take a look at next support this is another one of those every three to four hour runs and again it's less than 60 seconds I'm going to give you the routine here because I'm pretty sure that we all understand how our necks feel after a long day of sitting in front of the computer screen. I actually do a lot of my practice I do remotely, so I spend a lot of time in front of the computer screen, even from the health and wellness side of things. 
So this one, if you begin by facing forward, and this is another one that you can do along with me because it's that short of a routine if you want as we're talking through it. You turn your head uh, slowly to look over one shoulder, and then you turn it back to face forward and slowly to look over to the, your other shoulder. You may notice that one side, depending upon where you have your primary monitor, you may notice that one side of your neck is tighter than the other when you do that. You don't want to turn past your point of comfort, and when you reach your, your destination with your turn, you just hold that over the shoulder look for about 3 to 20 seconds. And you can also um, slowly tilt your head when you're facing forward, um, down like you're tucking your chin into your neck, or I'm sorry, your chin <laughs> into your chest, and then uh, hold that for 3 to uh, 20 seconds, and then you can also turn back up and look up towards the ceiling. You can add a little bit of resistance to these by using light pressure on your fingertips at your forehead and kind of try to bend forward and remove your hand, put it to the back of your head and try to bend back. And that light pressure should feel about like a nickel or a quarter worth of weight. You may notice that when you're doing some neck uh, support exercises that you hear some crackling. And most programmers have a very tight and crunchy occipital uh, frontalis muscle, um, which just runs kind of in the back region of your skull. The more that you do the neck support, the more that this crunchiness will uh, decrease with regular movement. If it does not decrease, you actually may be developing arthritis in that area. And actually, the crunchiness goes for all areas of your body. Um, if you do and you don't notice that it decreases, again, follow up with some more specific exercise out of diet modifications and talk with your physician, obviously. You make sure that I miss anything in neck support. Um, the other exercises there, um, you can grab like the right side of your head while you reach behind your back with your opposite hand. And then you want to tilt your head away or towards the elbow of the hand on your head until a gentle stretch is felt. And you hold that for about 3 to 15 seconds. So 1, 2, 3, and then you would release it. And then you would just repeat with your other side. And, of course, I have to say that no neck routine would be complete without the demure supermodel pose. And you do this one by placing your left hand on your left side shoulder blade. With your right hand, you gently stretch your head down away towards your, uh, your right side, and you hold for 3 to 15 seconds. And then you release it, and you repeat it with your other side. And all of your neck uh, movements can be completed while you're sitting or you're standing or walking. And I will have to take a video of Mr. Code Monkey making his way to the kitchen for more coffee because when he does his neck routines and he's walking, it's, it's really, it's funny, but not in a, in, in a mean way. It's just, I, I find it humorous and I like to see it. That brings us to shoulder swagger. This one runs about every three to four hours. So again, less than 60 seconds. Um, a lot of things that you can do there at your desk. You can modify them um, so that you're facing down and forward, out to your left and to your right. If you're going to do the, uh, the glide movements, the rocking to the left or the right, just make sure that your chairs are locked so you don't go sliding all over the place. And you can do your entire left side and then switch to your right side if you like as well. You can stand up and shift to that nice standing position. You can't keep your shirts on, by the way. I noted that, noticed that all these guys are shirtless. You don't have to take your shirt off to do any of the Code Monkey Health Guide movements. I promise you can leave them on. Um, so when you're standing up, you pinch your shoulder blades together, and you hold it for 3 to 20 seconds. Then you bring your arms up so your elbows are bent to a 90-degree angle. And when you pinch your shoulder blades together again and rotate your arms out, the most important part of this is that you say as loudly as you can, all your base are belong to us. You don't really have to say that, but you can. So I want to say special thanks to Beth Tucker Long and Anthony Ferrara because Beth was caught doing an owner pirate sighting. Short version of Backguard, do good. Real quick with the heart rate optimizer, just super, super quick, the idea is just get your heart rate up as easy as you can. The how-tos are in the download. Hydrator is uber important. Take a sip of water about every hour. Half an ounce to a full ounce for your pound of body weight every day. If you're trying to start, just add two to eight ounces at the top of the hour. And just keep a, a glass sitting on your desk. You want to be gentle with your body when you hydrate it. 
you don't want to power wash it like a, de um, like a deck or your driveway. You would just want to flush first thing in the morning, and then the whole rest of the day you want to sip gently. The scheduler pulls it all together, as you can see. So all those three to four hours and two to three hours and this, that, and the other, as you can see, it just works out to be 30 to 90 second breaks hourly. So that is the official guide, and I do apologize that I ran a little bit late according to my timer. Are there any questions? Nope, no questions. Uh, thank you very okay. much. I'm going to wrap it up. Thanks for joining us for another Nomad PHP Lightning Talk. If you'd like to give a Lightning Talk, please email me, joe at nomadphp.com. Please make sure you visit JoinedIn and leave Rebecca some feedback. Thanks.